The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. We will be glad and exalt you. We will sing praises to your name, O Most High. Let us sing those praises with hymn number 578, God of love and God of power. Let us affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed together, printed in gold. I believe in God, the Father
we come to this time in our service where we pause before Almighty God in prayer. And as we come in prayer, we lift up celebrations and thanksgivings, and we lift up intercessions and petitions of need. Are there prayers that you would like to offer this morning before the body of Christ? Yes, please, Pastor. Most gracious God, we are truly thankful for all your blessings, for your promise to be with us always, to stand with us, sustain us, help us, heal us, renew us. We do pray uh, prayers of thanksgiving for your mighty hand. We pray for those that uh, suffer griefs, um, face surgeries and illnesses. We thank you for the gift of life to the youngest, to the oldest. We ask you to bless this community as we seek to continue to be faithful in serving and recovering from the storm. Help us to pay attention to those that have little voice. We pray especially for our neighbors in the synagogue and Jewish community in Pennsylvania. Your tender mercy and care, your comfort in, in this bad time. I'll watch over them. And guide us, Lord, as we seek to be your church here and everywhere, a people that believe, a people that serve, and a people who pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from Hebrews, Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 13. Therefore, since we are all surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have forgotten the exhortation, the address to you as children. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, or lose heart when you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those whom he loves, and chastises every child whom he accepts. Endure trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as children. For what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not have that discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate and not his children. Moreover, we had human parents to discipline us, and we respected them. Should we not be even more willing to be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share his holiness. Now, discipline always seems patient rather than pleasant at the time, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This time I invite any children that are present to come forward for a special time together. The little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Good morning, ladies. How are you? Um, we'll pay you twice for. <laughs> double it. Oh, here comes, oh, that brought another one. Good, I'm glad you're here. So Anderson, um, what you got? 
Try again. What's wrong? I'm not taking the baton. One more time. Okay. All right. Okay, so a baton. Not the kind that you spin, you know, and throw up in the air, but a runner's baton. What do you do with these? Have you ever seen a, a race where they had one of these? No? You haven't? Check out the Summer Olympics. You'll see. That. So what they do is they, they run and they place it in the hand of the next person who then runs, who then places it in the hand of the next person who then runs, who places it in the hand of the next person who runs. Oh. Now, thank you. That's a silly point I'm trying to make. The baton is to be handed and to be passed and each person has to take it and, and you don't take the baton and go home with it. You don't take the baton and run your part and then just look at the next person and say, go on. It's to be handed, it's to be passed one to another and it'd be silly to drop it or just refuse to participate. See, for us as, as followers of Jesus, this baton is the love of God. And God wants you to have it. He wants you to experience the love of God in your life. But does He want you just to keep it to yourself? What do you think He wants you to do with it? Then do what? He wants you to pass it. And pass it. And pass it. And pass it. And pass it. We don't stop. We, we don't take this and put it up on a shelf as a, as a, as a you know, trophy. This is... We just constantly are passing from our blessing to the next person, the love of, of God. And I want you to think about that every day, that you're called to pass the love of God on. Okay? Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for teaching us, for, for helping us as your, uh, your disciples uh, to learn about passing on uh, your great love and blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for coming up, ladies. I appreciate it. It would have looked silly me doing it by myself.
Let us join together in number 593, Here I Am, Lord. And let us, let us pray. Speak, Lord. For your people are listening. May your word accomplish all you desire in us and through us. Amen. Most of us love our sports. 
Now, I know there are a few exceptions in the room. You're the outliers, you know. You're, you, you don't really care so much. But most of us, it's as if sports is like a second religion. You know, we pastors watch for patterns in our congregations. And, and there's this one pattern. I know some church people who will sit in the rain all day long Saturday in a football game. But if it's raining on Sunday morning, <laughs> we're devoted to our sports. And, and if you are so to sports in general or a particular sport, it commands an incredible amount of loyalty. You wear the jersey or the t-shirt. You follow the stars. You keep the stats. You invest incredible amounts of energy and time and money. Whether you're playing the sport or just attending the sport, or if you are the parent or the grandparent of a budding athlete. And so perhaps that's why the Apostle Paul saw the great potential in the analogy between sports and the life of following Jesus. So he wrote in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Because we who are Christians are to invest no less than the athlete, our time, our energy, our commitment, or our resources. We need the same, if not even greater, self-discipline and focus as any athlete. We are the stewards of the graces of God even more than an athlete is a steward of their talents. And so the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 9, Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. Run in order to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body, make it my slave, so that after I've preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. be to God. Run to get the prize. The Christian life is not some sort of haphazard, uh, spontaneous, free-for-all. There is a purpose and a goal that has been set out there for us. And while the journey that we make as disciples is significant, there is an end game. The Christian life is, is not simply about us just sort of cleaning up our act a bit, putting on piety for public sake, learning a few Bible verses, or being good people, or even helping others. The ultimate goal of the Christian faith is that we might be like Christ and glorify God and live with God forever. Nothing less. We get to run to get the crown. But it's not a, a simple crown of, of greenery as it was in the old days or a gold medal around the neck. We run for God and we run to experience the new life in Christ. And so we don't run aimlessly. We don't box the air. We discipline ourselves. We, we control ourselves and we fix our eyes on the goal. And we run with maximum effort. So we've chosen for our generosity emphasis this year, running the race, off and running. 
We are being called to run in a race by our generosity. The win, or the goal, is our faithful support of the mission and the ministry that God wants to call us to and accomplish in us and through us. And, and please, please, we don't do this for our glory. We don't do this to build up the name of First United Methodist Church. This is about God's glory. We're not trying to build up our kingdom. This is God's kingdom. We're not recruiting people just to pump up our membership role. We are enrolling people in the community of salvation. This race is important and eternal. In the Hebrews 12 passage, you heard the author of Hebrews say, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run the race. And then gives us three things that we must do if we are to run this race and gain the crowd. First, crown. First, we must lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. Have you ever noticed runners? on TV or maybe running up and down the streets here in Moorhead. Now, you're never going to catch me doing that. <laughs> Particularly this thing. They wear the tiniest little shorts. <laughs> and, and I understand that they do it because they don't want any excess weight or, or friction that might slow them down and, and wear themselves out. Well, we as Christians also need to lighten our load. An old preacher was once challenged because in all his sermons he talked about the weight, the burden of sin. And so a, a detractor once said, Preacher, I, sin doesn't seem like such a big deal. Sin doesn't seem heavy to me. To which the old preacher asked this question in response. So... If you put a heavy sack of potatoes on a dead body, how much weight would he feel? You see, if sin entraps us and if sin weighs us down, then it's as if we're dead in sin and it doesn't weigh that much. If we choose to let sin be our master, then Christ cannot be our master. It says you can't have two Sin is so insidious, it enters into us and infects our bodies and grows inside us until it overcomes us. But Jesus calls us to leave sin, to leave the, the, the burden of sin, to, to cast off its weight, to turn our back on it and to go forward in Christ. And the Bible says also, cast off the guilt as well. Now, now that's not the guilt that we should have. If we hurt others or for unforgiven sin. But if we're carrying around guilt for sins that we have long ago been forgiven for, then we are denying the very promises of God. It says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So fr friends, we need to get clean. We need to get lean and lay aside the weight and the sin. Secondly, we need to run this race set out before us with perseverance. This is not going to be an easy race. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. There will be hills and valleys, headwinds and driving thunderstorms. There will be deterrence and distractions of every sort. The world will encourage us at every turn to give up or at least to take a break or Make it more easy. But we must not give up. We must persevere. Do you remember the Romans text from just a few weeks ago? We rejoice in our sufferings because sufferings produce endurance or perseverance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts. Have you ever noticed in a race that once the winner crosses the finish line, the other runners don't just quit and, and go home or walk off the course. They persevere. 
They run to finish. Jesus said in Luke 9, no one who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is fit for the kingdom. We are to keep on going. And third, and, and this is key, look to Jesus. It says in Romans, in Hebrews 12, it says, fix your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Don't take your eyes off Jesus. Don't fix your eyes on any human leader or any earthly institution. Jesus is the goal. I've got some Newburn friends here. Well, we enjoyed 13 years living and pastoring in Newburn, and there were these wonderful folks that adopted us as grandparents, Milt and Peggy. And they would take us out on the Trent River in their Cape Dory. And, uh, and they would let, Milt would let Thomas and Lindsay, we little kids, steer the boat for a little while. And it was just such fun. They had a blast. But what was really funny was whenever Thomas or Lindsay were distracted by another boat on the river or by something that they saw on the shore that got their interest, then the boat would go <laughs> in that direction. And Milt would gently remind them, you go where you look. If we look at the temptations of the world, that's where we'll go. If we look and fix our eyes on the goals and the values of the world, then that's where we'll go and apply all our energy to achieve them. But God has for us kingdom goals. And we're to go the way of Jesus. One of our favorite passages, stories in the Gospels, is about Jesus inviting Peter to get out of the boat. Remember that wonderful story? Right? So Jesus is on the water. And he says, Peter, come to me. And Peter actually leaves the security of the boat, steps out, and walks on the water towards Jesus. Amazing. Then the Bible says, but Peter began to hear the wind and see the waves, and he began to sink. Peter took his eyes off Jesus, and he lost his footing. Now the good news in the story is that Jesus immediately reached out and took his hand. But we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus and know that he then will hold us secure. So for our stewardship challenge, which is how we ready ourselves for 2019, and friends, it's going to be here before I'm ready for it. We have a race to run that has been set out by God for us. Now, we could have chosen a sprint, because some weeks it feels like a sprint, doesn't it? You just run as hard as you can, as fast as you can, just to survive. We could have chosen a marathon, because sometimes it feels like that too, a, a long and arduous run along the plains and sometimes up Heartbreak Hill. But we decided that the best race to consider is a relay, where we are a team. And each of us is running our leg. It's ours. No one can run your leg for you. It's on each of us. And, and we hand off the baton to the next runner, and the next, and the next. And in this race, the baton is the goodness of God. The grace and mercy that God has given us the gifts and the talents and the resources that God has entrusted to us. God has placed them in our hands. And then we run. They grow in us and we serve. Handing off the baton. Passing God's blessings forward. We are blessed by God, are we not? We are called to be His people. We're called to do His work for His glory. That's the race that's set out before us. And the prize is the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And it is nothing less than salvation. 
in this world and in the next. And to run this race and receive this prize, we need to lay aside every weight and sin, run with perseverance, and fix our eyes on Jesus. I hope you remember, but if you don't, go home and check it out on Google or Netflix. The movie Chariots of Fire, about Eric Little, a Scottish runner and a Christian. And it's a story about his efforts in the 1924 Summer Olympics. And his sister came to him and pressed him hard, saying that he needed to give up this silly running and follow his parents as missionaries in China. But Eric Little believed that God wanted him to run. And these words from him never left me. Little said to his sister, God made me fast. And when I run, I feel God's pleasure. So as you consider your generosity for the ongoing work of Christ, fix your eyes on Jesus, run the race, and feel the pleasure of God. Amen. Amen. And now let us sing together. Hymn number 580, Lead On, O King Eternal. After the benediction, you're invited to join in singing the response that's printed in your bulletin. Now receive this blessing. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sustaining fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you this day and forevermore. Amen. Share His love by telling what the Lord has done for you. Share his love by sharing of your faith. And show the world that Jesus Christ is real to you every moment.